Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would find myself in the office of a neuropsychologist, week after week, receiving family therapy. But I am so glad that we did the hard work of therapy. We would like to share a little bit of our therapy journey with you and show you that it's really a valuable endeavor. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Lynn. And, and together, together we're Lynn and Steve. Steve. The definition of therapy is treatment intended to relieve or heal a disorder, something that disrupts normal physical or mental function. Catch that word disrupts. Wow, that's an accurate word. Asperger's was disrupting our lives. We were needing relief and relief is what we got. Steve's healing came later after the therapy. We'll talk about that at another time. Now, when our neuropsychologist offered family therapy to us, our heads were still spinning, taking in and processing the diagnosis. I am very grateful that this was offered to us by the neuropsychologist that did the diagnosis because I don't know if I would have looked for a therapist, nor if I could have ever found someone as good as she was. She really understood Asperger's. And I want to say right here, that if you do not find someone who is knowledgeable about Asperger's, forget it. It can actually work against you. Before we started therapy, I had read two books on the subject. One, A Very light, Late Diagnosis of Asperger's, and two, Alone Together. They gave me a leg up as we began the therapy process. But being newly diagnosed, it was about me learning my limitations with Asperger's. For the first time, my life experiences were explained, made sense, and validated. One of the first things that our therapist talked to us about was that each individual person in our family had their own perspective about what was going on in our family. Every person had wounds for different reasons. Phew, boy, did we ever. It was quite the wounded mess that we were. When we received diagnosis and started therapy, only two children were still at home. The rest were not talking to us and therefore they did not ever get in on the therapy, but it was good to have a place to discuss things with a moderator, the therapist, and to know that any Aspie cray cray processing would now be under someone else's observation. Steve, what do you remember about therapy in the beginning? It felt like our therapist was a neurotranslator, translating the language of an Asperger's brain to that of a neurotypical brain. It felt like we were beginning to understand each other's worlds for the very first time. And for the first time in my life, things were starting to make sense, even though things were still spinning in my brain with Asperger's. The spinning was slowing down and I began to feel more in control. Now to you, Cassandras, I wanna prepare you that there were aspects of the therapy that were really hard for me and hard on me. I was never one to strongly come against anyone, but the therapist taught me that since Aspies hit a reset button quickly and often, and then have no idea that anything occurred, I had to let the Aspie know immediately about any harsh, inappropriate comments or whatever by saying something like, that hurt me. She also suggested another method of parroting back to the Aspie exactly how they said it as soon as the offensive words were said. It took a lot of practice and it was not easy, but once I got the hang of it, it was empowering. Steve, what do you remember about all of that stuff in the beginning? Obviously, you remember a whole lot more than, than I do because my brain processed so much slower and I still had a lot of processing ahead of me. With the recent diagnosis, I was becoming aware of how my actions with Asperger's were affecting you. I was learning to give you space, to give you relief. 
The therapist reminded me that black and white answers are always best for the Aspie. This was helpful because I dreaded when Steve would ask me questions like, what time are we eating? It always seemed to me like my answer might make him mad. Like what if he wanted to eat sooner? Or I was afraid to commit to a time because I might fail to have dinner ready by the promised time. So I would give really ambiguous, wishy-washy answers to play it safe, but that would actually make him irate. <laughs> so eventually I learned that number one, I could tell him very black and white, I don't like giving an exact time. At least that was a sure answer. And number two, sometimes I would say, I don't know. At least it was black and white. He was honest. It was the wishy-washy that drove him nuts. Do you remember that? Yes, that was really helpful to learn what was going on with the way Lib responded and to understand that I was coming across as intimidating to her. We were learning how to accommodate each other's neural processing style. Also, I want to mention that it gave us helpful skills to co-parent. Our son, who also has Asperger's, was diagnosed at the same time I was, and he was present for this therapy. It was very helpful for him as well. We really encourage you to start doing research and finding out where there is a trusted therapist who really understands Asperger's. So many people do online therapy these days, and that makes it easier. Make some phone calls, get something going, take the next step. You can do this. You are a powerful person. Therapy was a huge blessing in our life, which opened up new areas of understanding and brought a measure of peace to our family. We are so glad that the blessings didn't stop there. There's so much more goodness to come with our story. So join us on our journey. In future episodes, we will explore what came next. It's going to be exciting. So make sure to keep listening. Like us and subscribe. And remember, hope is on the way. Our breakthrough makes a way for your breakthrough.